What's up, Graham? I literally have no makeup on. I don't even have mascara on. <laughs> but it's actually perfect for this message. By the way, I normally don't have makeup on on the gram, so <laughs> it's not that different. But um, I have I have a message, and my message is more important than my makeup. And this message got spurred by a girl that I heard on TikTok yesterday, and it's just been like, mm, it's just been in there ever since. And it was this TikTok where this girl was, she was eating a bunch of food, and she was saying, have you ever noticed that all of the women on my, sorry, I don't, is it called my 600 pound life, my 500 pound life, one of the, you know what I'm talking about? She's like, have you ever noticed that all of those women have boyfriends? And she's like, so girl, eat whatever you want. And she's just eating all this stuff. And as I, I just sat there and kind of thought about that. And then on one hand, I appreciated her message, right? Like she was just saying like, you're not going to not be able to find a man because of your body fat percentage, which I appreciate that side of things. But what I didn't appreciate was like, she was overweight and eating a bunch of crap. And it was like this message of like, go ahead and get as fat as you want because guys will still love you even if you're fat. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> this is the, the, the deeper roots of what she's saying there is in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons that people do not take care of their health or one of the biggest problems that we have in our relationship with ourselves and our physical body. And that's our attachment with this idea that our physical bodies equate to our value as human beings, equate to how attractive we are, how other people see us. Like I've had many clients or friends or people tell me, I want to get fit so people respect me. I don't want people looking at me and not respecting me. And I was like, well, I'll tell you what, like I've never not respected you because of the way your body looks. Hey, what's up, Ryan? We got Ryan Evans on here. Yes, it's not self-love if we don't look after our vessel, right? And so I just kept thinking about this today and I was like, okay, so if we are only taking care of ourselves in order to be more attractive, now, of course, we, we all have that innate, desire to be attractive to the opposite sex. I'm like, I'm not denying that even if you're married and you're going to go on a date night, you're going to get yourself all dolled up and you're going to look nice, right? Like that's primal. But as far as from a health perspective, how we take care of our bodies, if we're only doing that in order to be more valuable to other people, we've now equated our intrinsic value as human beings with how we look with our physical appearance and that's a slippery slope to hell. You don't want to be in that place. So here's the thing. Let's say you're dating somebody and they're only taking care of themselves to attract you. And then you're, you're attracted to their lifestyle and how they take care of themselves, all these things. And like, oh, I roped you in. And now I'm just going to like totally let it go. You just trick somebody. That wasn't, you weren't even being true to yourself. And I don't know about you, but I don't like it when I'm dating and someone's trying to impress me. That is a huge turnoff. I can tell. I'm like, don't impress me. Just show me who you really are, <laughs> you know? And so I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up because there is a huge correlation with our physical appearance and how valuable we think we are. And this is why people punish themselves and are mean to themselves and say things like, oh, you're gross. They look in the mirror and they're like, oh, gross. You're disgusting. All these things. I'll tell you what, when I used to be overweight, the, the thing that helped shift me into a long-term healthy fit body was being nice to my body, having gratitude for my body because the decisions that you make are higher vibe more easily, right? I don't eat healthy food as like a punishment because I didn't like the way my butt looked in the mirror. I used to do that when I never got results. <laughs> it didn't last long because my relationship with my body was nasty. It was not healthy. So one of the things I like to talk about with my clients is our relationship with our body. Actually, in my Level Up program, that's the first month, is our relationship with food and our bodies. So what are relationships based in? Respect, honesty, trust, communication, love. So this rejection of our bodies is like comical, almost, in my opinion. Because the way I look at the human body is like it is a... a like a kingdom of millions, trillions of subjects who are all dependent on you for their health and survival, 
So you know those scenes in the movies where like the evil king is like, he's like hoarding all the water and all the resources and the people are like, please, we want to thrive, but we can't because we don't have any water or resources. And he's like, you disgusting people, you'll never amount to anything. Like that's how I look at it when we are mean to our bodies when they're struggling. <laughs> when we reject our bodies when we're struggling. It should be the opposite. So if your body is struggling, or even if you have more body fat than you wanna have, which is not actually that bad of a health issue, but it can get bad over time because it's a sign of you know insulin resistance and other issues. Instead of rejecting our body, how about we say, hey body, I got you. Tell, let me know what you need. What do you need? When was the last time you asked your body what it needed? Whenever I have an injury, I'm like, I'll go into meditation and I'll put my hand on my heart and I like go inside and I'm like, what do you need? And I get answers and it's crazy what comes through sometimes. I need minerals, I need water, I need rest. I need you to stop doing that exercise, stop running. Hey, what's up from Northern Ireland? Thank you for the hello. Um, so like going back to this initial thing of like, oh, don't take care of yourself. You can just, people will love you even if you're fat. Of course they will. Of course they will, but that's that's a separate issue from how you take care of your own health because of your own relationship with yourself and your body. You are not more or less lovable depending on how you look. I know it might feel that way because of like where society is at right now because it's very broken. Because <laughs> everyone is like living in that delusion and so then they project it on other people. But if you're, if you are in a place where your body, the way it looks typically has to meet a certain standard in order to get your love, you are now in a conditional love relationship with your body. And how do you how, do you have any conditional love relationships in your life? Anybody have a parent who kind of exhibited conditional love? I'll love you if you meet my expectations. Or maybe you had a relationship yourself where you were like that with somebody. I'll love you if, and when you meet my expectations or you felt that coming from somebody else How's that relationship. Super good? <laughs> nope. So that's that's what I'm talking about with our body. Like be real with yourself and ask yourself like, do I love my body as it is? And this is like real hard for a lot of my overweight clients. They're like, dude, no. Like they, they, they won't let themselves get there. They haven't been letting themselves get there for decades. And it's not bullshit. It, this is not like bullshit self-love talk. I am telling you, I know enough uber fit people in this place, it doesn't matter how fit you get. I don't care if you're like freaking paper thin skin because you're so lean. If you got there and the energy of like, I hate myself until I meet my expectations, no matter how fit and thin you get, you will stay in that place. And it's scary for people to let go of this. It's scary for people to be like, I love myself like this. No, no. Because if I love myself like this, then it's just, it's going to get even worse. And I'm going to end up on my 600 pound life or 500 pound life or whatever it's called because I've never seen it. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to end up with Doritos all over my chest and just like this slob who never amounts to anything. It is not true. And that's what keeps people in that place. Like if I love myself now, that means I'll just, I'll stay like this or get worse. And that is not what happens. When you love yourself right as you are right now, like I got you girl, I got you bro or whatever you guys say. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I love you. And I'm with you in this. And you are worthy of all the things. And you get in that energy. You start building your energy up. And then you start making higher vibe choices. And I apologize if you guys have heard me say this before, but I think it's so important. David R. Hawkins, scale of consciousness. He has shown that the lowest vibrational energies through muscle testing, which makes us weakest, are shame and guilt. So, Let's say you ate a bunch of pie this afternoon, left over from Thanksgiving, if you're American. Okay, you ate a bunch of pie, you went freaking bananas on it, you ate all the things, and now you're shaming yourself and guilting yourself, and you're like, freak man, you always do this, I give up, I'm never gonna make it, look. And you, sorry, lost the gas for a second. You go into the shame and guilt, now you're in the lowest vibrational energy, and you are going to make, continue, gosh dang it, <laughs> I'm losing my connection. You're gonna continue to make choices from a low vibrational energy. So guess what one of the most high vibrational energies is? Love and acceptance actually is one of them. So when you accept yourself and love yourself, you just pulled yourself into a higher vibrational energy and guess what you do when you're in the higher vibrations? You make high vibe choices for yourself. So today I ate a deliciously nutritious lunch, not because I had to, not because I'm trying to lose weight, 
because I'm in a high vibration with myself and that's felt self honoring. It's just like, mm, my body's going to love this. So the last thing I'll talk about is self sabotage. Cause this has been like a big thing with me lately. I've never liked the phrase self sabotage. I was like, there's something about that. That just sounds weird. It sounds like a cop out. I don't know. Like, so what does that even mean? Self sabotage. So for me, I have switched in my mind the phrase self sabotage with self abuse that that fits better to me. So the way this is how I see it with clients who had um, parents that did the conditional love thing. You have to be like this in order to feel love for me. You have to meet these expectations. Don't be like this. Do be like that. Very controlling kind of abusive parents, you know, maybe not, not to the point of they got taken away from their parents, but it was still this very conditional love expectation energy. However, your parents parent you as a, as a kid, unless you've done a lot of work, you parent yourself like that now. So you treat yourself like that. So your the habits of self-sabotage to me are really just self-abuse. It's, mm, you're not going to make it. You can't do it. You just throw in the towel, right? And so it's this, it's this abusive behavior. So when you feel that coming in, one of my favorite resources for this is the book Self-Compassion from Kristen Neff. But when you feel yourself being really hard on yourself, shaming yourself, guilting yourself, all of these negative emotions, you're being mean to yourself. I think personally think so much of depression is just because you have this crazy strong inner critic with you all day just saying mean shit to you. I just told two clients this today. Like, have you ever seen like a parent being really freaking mean to their kid at the grocery store and they're just like berating them? Why would you do something like that? What were you thinking? What, what is that kid's energy like? Their heads hung low. They're like, they're feeling small, right? They're not feeling good and happy and thriving in themselves in that moment. And so when we do this to your, ourselves, and sometimes it's th these patterns are so subconscious, they're so suppressed, we don't even realize we're doing it. This is why the work of Byron Katie is super helpful because it brings all that subconscious self-talk to the conscious mind. And you're like, holy shit, I didn't realize I had that <laughs> negative stuff going on. Um, but when you're doing that all day to yourself, like not good enough, should have you should have said that, you shouldn't have said that, that was stupid. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you forgot that. Oh, what's wrong with you? Ugh you know, just all this like berating all day, that's going to be really depressing to be around in your own freaking mind. So like, watch how you treat yourself. And at, like, if you are looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, Ooh, you are depressing yourself. You, the consciousness inside of you needs to change that habit. Because you're being abusive to your body. And I know all this stuff because I've lived through it. Like I used to do that. <laughs> Right. And when I started switching and it like started telling myself more support, supportive, loving, kind things of like, I got you. What do you need? Let's go. You're doing great. Everything started to shift. So yeah. Anyway, I got a little, I got on a whole bunch of tangents, but the, 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 the reason I started this is because I'm, I actually got brought to tears over it today. Cause I was just like, freak man, so many people are suffering sorry, because they, they, they have so much of their value attached to their physical body, you know, cause I, I hear the insides of this every day for a living. Right. So it's like every once in a while it gets me, but it's like the, I feel like the antidote to that is to just start telling yourself more positive, loving, kind things to yourself. So you can rewrite that pattern. If you are mean to yourself all the time and hard on yourself, I'm talking even little things like, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. Like, don't say that. Don't. You might catch yourself. You're going to slip. You're going to do it because it's probably so ingrained. But like, we got to nix that habit. And on top of that, on top of just not saying the negative things, we need to say positive, kind things to ourselves. When I complete all sorts of tasks, I'm like, good job, girlfriend. Good freaking job. I'll do a little dance to myself. <laughs> right? When I do something hard, have a hard conversation that was scary for me because I'm breaking patterns and I'm speaking my truth. I'm like, good freaking job. Good job. Like, and giving myself that support. When I'm running, I'm like, you got this. You got this. You're doing great. Yeah. Beast mode. Let's go. You know, it's this very supportive self-talk and it completely changes your reality. Um, so, yeah. I guess... Uh, you know, uh, to wrap things up, my, the, the gist of my message is one, your value is not in your body. I don't know how to say that. That sounds so like weak. I, I wish I could say it in a better way. Like 
your value is not your body. Like how, who, how you treat yourself, that who you are on the inside and how you treat yourself, that will become the way that you treat everybody else. So this, like the, the, the value, if we want to talk value, the value is like, in how you, your, your mode of operation, right? How you choose to be with yourself and others. And it breeds so much self-confidence and self-love when you are in the energy of being kind and compassionate. And I, I, I've seen this enough. If you are the type of person who puts a ton of expectations on yourself, you doing that to other people, <laughs> probably the person you're married to the most, right? The whoever's closest to you, your kids or whoever. Right. And so it starts with us. How we treat ourselves is how we'll treat others. Um, I remember when I started working with Catherine Dixon, doing the work of Byron Katie, um, one time we were getting into all the negative self-talk, right? It's like, how are you treating yourself when you believe this stressful thought? And it's like all this nasty stuff. It's like, I'm abusing myself. I'm, I'm, I'm belittling myself. I'm, you know, I'm making myself small and all these things. And I'll never forget. It was one of my first sessions with her. She was like, would you ever talk to anybody else like that? And I'm like, no. And she's like, yes, you would. <laughs> and I was like, no. And she's like, yeah. If you got stressed and pressured enough, you would treat someone else like that because that's how you treat yourself. And as sad as it is to admit, like I thought of my kids when I get super freaking to my wits end and, you know, just totally at that place where I just can't take anymore. I do. I, I, it's totally true. I would, I would treat them just like I treated me when I was in my most pressured moments. Why are you doing that? Ugh, all this stuff. Right. So changing that relationship with myself really changed how I was showing up with them too. So it's, it's so important. It is so important that we, um, treat ourselves in like a self honoring, self supportive, loving way. Give ourselves compassion. Give ourselves a break. I know we don't want to do it because we've been using that as a motivational tool for so long, but how's it working for you? What's the results you getting out of that? Like little inner critic, uh, tyrant in your mind. You like, you like the results of that? It sucks sucks. I did it for a long time and I've done so much work to shift that into a self-supportive energy. And it's like somebody messaged me the other day. They're like, girl, how come you're so happy and lit up about life all the time? And I think that's a big part of it, right? Yeah. Gratitude, meditation, eating healthy, exercising, relationships. Those things are all important too. But like my inner di dialogue is so happy. It's so kind to myself that it breeds a lot of happiness because it's like a happy, safe place to be in my own mind, <laughs> you know? So, all right, that's all. I'm going to go get pretty, get my nails done. <laughs> okay. See you guys. Bye.